That was fun. I loved meeting Mr. Trenzo, and he seemed like a really big deal. He asked me what I would do if I were a CEO. That was cool. When I finish college, I am going to reach out to CUNA Mutual Group for a job. Be ready. It sounds like a good place to work. James, it was incredible hearing you ask questions and hearing what credit unions mean to society. It would be a dark, sad place without credit unions. Let's learn more about why and how credit unions in the United States help people. Here we go. I like the fact that uh, you are involving children uh, in, in the uh, effort. Uh, that's great. Uh, exposure at an early age, I think, is a very positive thing. And it, it really provides a sense of hope uh, for, for me about uh, uh, the future, uh, as well as future uh, uh, citizens and leadership uh, here. Uh, within our country and across North America and the world. Border towns are very unique because the, the way we operate is uh, we have that connection with Mexico. There is a, a definitely a connection. Even anytime there's a disruption in the border, uh, whether it will be the port of entry being closed, it disrupts the economy in the border towns. Like right now, you know, people are not able to come shopping from Mexico. Therefore, our retailers are suffering here in town. And so there's there's always a disruption. I, I just feel that for us as credit unions, you know, we, we need to be innovative. Yes, because I think if our members move away, we need to have the tools that they can still be, be served by us wherever they go. But I, I feel that, um, the, the only border that we have is the lack of us to be progressive or attentive to our members' needs. And, and that's what we need to focus. We need to make sure that, that we don't establish borders for ourselves. It's really about um, supporting, nurturing, helping to grow. And, you know, it's my belief that if some of those rural credit unions weren't there, we would have banking deserts. And that would be a tragedy for rural America, for, uh, for folks who would have to drive 50 or 100 miles to get to the nearest financial institution. So I really take that seriously, that we need to ensure that those financial services, those low cost credit union financial services are available in these, in these communities, because that may be the only choice. And we don't, you know, frankly, there's an argument that maybe that would be better served by FinTechs, but I still believe that a community-based financial institution is a really important part of the fabric of any community. Uh, you know, I think of WBRT, uh, Federal Credit Union. The reason they started was for uh, racial issues down there. There was a uh, teacher's credit union, but then WBRT was, was for the black folks who weren't allowed to participate in other financial institutions. And you think of stories like that, and that credit union, uh, it was founded back in the 50s, still here today, it's only 2 million in assets, but they're still focused on that same segment of, these are the people that we need to serve because they're not, they're not getting served anywhere else. So you think of stories like that, whether it's for racial equality, financial equality, you know, the, the credit unions we work with are very passionate about their mission and it, it varies. It's not always just based on finance. It's not always just based on race. I think of Columbine Federal Credit Union that serves the power sports industry. And, you know, thinking of that as underserved, no one else wants you to use motorcycle loans there. And they found a, a very good niche of serving people who have a dream of owning a motorcycle. They can't afford a, a brand new one. Uh, so it's been fun to watch some of these credit unions repurpose themselves or refocus uh, back in on why they were founded and, and serve people who just can't get that service somewhere else. I personally believe in the, in the value and the, the role of a small credit union for many reasons. Um, 
mostly because they're able to connect with their members at a level that while we i think do a good job it's not it will never be the same as a small local credit union that knows it's that knows its members that knows its demographics that knows the unique needs that are going on and can respond and can sit around a table and make those decisions together um and i think that the more we uplift that ability the stronger the movement becomes because then we're speaking a collective language of being there um, for people's financial needs in a way that is inclusive of everybody's. I'm really amazed. I think back on, I think, <clears throat> I think back on my career and um, the wonderful opportunities I had, and um, thinking that I was not enough from time to time, and that I uh, needed to somehow be more because of who I was, and not always being able to be my authentic self because of that fear. I see um, on our our calls with the CU Pride group, these young people that are uh, trans or very, um, very alternative in their appearance or their, uh, their choices. Um, and, and they are in Kansas, in Arkansas, in Montana. Um, and they are making a difference in their credit unions, opening eyes, um, making huge steps forward um, that if they weren't there, probably wouldn't happen. And so from that standpoint, um, the whatever generation you're from, whether it's you know a brand new person starting in the credit union industry, um, someone that's worked their way into middle management, somebody that's a CEO or a board member, um, I think that the opportunity for the LGBTQ plus community to be able to take our pride and make it a uh, big way to contribute to the success of your credit union is um is priceless um, the opportunity to stand up and make sure that folks are served and with dignity and with respect uh, that there is no discrimination in um, hiring practices that there is no discrimination at the board level um, the opportunities are still huge but the current crop of people that i see coming up in our industry And be proud. And the new way is to judge people, judge our leaders, not by how they look, but how they think and how they feel, and if they're of a good heart. Let's truly diversify and choose leaders based on the content of their character. That's more complex, that's more difficult. That requires more discussion, but it's worth it because that is our future. And I'm counting on uh, the African-American Credit Union Coalition to show us the way on that. And by the way, you wanna start a small revolution along that line, picking people based on the content of their character the next time you are given a form, one of those forms to fill out, when you get down to the race question, skip on down to other and just write in human. And of course, when you get to the gender and sex question, skip on down to the male and female and just write yes. Fill in the blank. The world would be a better place if. Wow, great question, James. And we could go pretty broad in this answer. I'll say to me, the world would be a better place if everyone would show compassion, be more tolerant, patient of one another and kind. And, you know, in daily interactions, just uh, be better with people. If everyone had the chance to live in another country. 
What would the world be like without credit unions? A world without credit unions is a world that misses out on financial wellness opportunities for all. Um, I, I think to use an analogy for your rising sixth grade uh, status and your uh, move up in grades, I would say, you know, bullying is a, a very uh, prominent topic. And I'd say that the larger banks, financial institutions like that kind of bully your financial situation to work for them. And I'd say a credit union takes your financial institution or your financial situation and works to make it work for you. It would be a very dark place. All of us would be paying more for services and we would have less access, much less access. Are credit unions cool? <laughs> are you kidding? They are absolutely cool. You know, what kind of business model uh, is there? Uh, credit unions and co-ops where everyone wins. Uh, everyone wins together. Yes, yeah, it's totally cool. Absolutely, credit unions are cool. I think the reason credit unions are cool is because they are adapting their business to your generation. I think you learn a different way and credit unions are passionate about that and they, they are there to be a resource for you. And for that reason, it makes them cool. Are you ready for me? <laughs> you know what? I better be and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I will say not only are we ready for you, we are expecting you. Uh, the way our credit union system and all of the partners that work with credit unions have adapted their business, it is pointed right at you. So, you know, people your generation will be able to connect with the credit union in the way that it works best. And again, not losing sight of ensuring that you have a, su a successful financial future. Uh, that's, that's why we're ready for you expecting you and, and we'll be ready to welcome you. I'm so excited to be here with you live and thank you so much for joining us. We have a sense of urgency around conversations that will push the industry forward, create change and challenge our leadership to build relevancy of credit unions. For this collision, you can tell we are focusing on the next generation. According to UNICEF, there are 1.2 billion children between the ages of 10 and 19, making up 16% of the world's population. They will be establishing first-time relationships based upon organizational social impact. Are we ready? Are leaders willing to be vulnerable? As we plan for the next five years, think about the fact that that 11 year old will be your future member. The next generation expects to be heard. They want a place to belong and be part of an organization that's authentic. There is a new way, and it's about the human connection, putting the heart into the business. Personal service is not limited to in-person or to digital. It's about the community, a place to belong. Community is not geographic. It's a social connection. As we have seen with the groups coming together on important issues this year. The data shows that financial institutions, including our credit unions, are falling behind fintechs. Why? Many think it's because we can't spend enough on technology. Many consider it the strongest, the strongest will survive. Well, how many of us think about how society is changing 
and decisions are being made long before 16. The next generation has spent the last 18 months navigating the world. They want us to step up and truly make a difference. Are we striving for a demographic that has moved on? Or are we positioning for the future? Ideas into action. One, use a new language that speaks to the future generation. It's not about literacy. It's about financial control. It's not words. It's action. Two, discover authentic vulnerability and seek voices that are diverse, intuitive, and relevant. Number three, the world is a dark place without credit unions. Show it, measure your impact, and instill a sense of urgency that reflects the times we will never be the same again. It's a new day. If we do that, then credit unions will be cool.